Greetings and welcome to Caribbean Vanguard. Hundreds of far-right protesters and counter-group gathered for two demonstrations near Castle Park. Tensions have been high across England after the killing of three young girls in Southport, Maryside on Monday. On Tuesday, after false information was spread on social media that the suspects of the stabbings was a radical Islamist migrant, anti-immigrant protesters stormed the town from elsewhere. Police have said that the attack was not terrorism related and that the suspect was born in Britain, quashing the speculation on his origins. Campaigners later moved to outside a hotel that houses asylum seekers. Anti-racist protesters say that they lock arms to stop rival demonstrators from storming the building. Bottles were thrown, windows were smashed, and there have been several scuffles with officers. The forces spokesperson said, While we facilitate peaceful protests, some of the behavior we have seen is completely unacceptable and we will not tolerate it. We are advising people to avoid the city center. During the protests outside the Mikua Hotel and Redcliffe Hill, frightened guests were seen looking out their windows. 16 people have been arrested for various offenses following the violent disorder in Bristol on Saturday night. They were arrested for offenses including a prey, which is disturbing the peace. They were also arrested for racial aggravated public disorder, animal cruelty, and assaulting an emergency worker. The arrest came after thousands of far-right protesters and counter-protest group gathered for two demonstrations near Castle Park. Avon and Summerrest police warned the people involved in Saturday's shameful scenes to expect a knock on their door soon. At the demonstration in the Castle Park, protesters sang Rule Britannia, England till I die, and we want our country back. We should not be surprised. None of us should be surprised. We heard this song before. We've seen this movie over and over again. As long as we did not allow society to blind us with that turn the other cheek and Jesus love all of us and love is love gibberish, then we would have seen stuff like this coming because we did not put down our God. I created a video with a UK man warning people of UK, telling them, hey, immigrants are coming to take over and so forth and so forth. He was pushing his fear monger stuff. These are the same people who are still in Africa and other parts of the world, still trying to take over, still don't want to move out, but they don't want you to come to their country. Imagine that. They come to your country. They buy up acres upon acres of land and then put private signs on there that prevents the locals from getting on the land. That is why I tell the common people of the Caribbean, we cannot simply vote someone into office and then turn a blind eye and let them do what they do. One thing people need to consider is the so-called good guys. Throughout history, these so-called good guys have been used to infiltrate, they have been used as a weapon to continue whatever intent the so-called bad guys have. Don't think for once that the ones who you consider to be bad guys are not infiltrating the good guys. Don't think for once that they are not related. They are. They are family. The good guys will protect the bad guys. They may try to protect you to some extent, but at the end of the day, they are with their people. I remember reading a story about the Maroons in Dominica and some of the so-called good guys who were left on the island after their nations invaded Dominica, right? Once their nations come back to take over, then those so-called good guys who are allowed to live among the locals, they end up helping out their people. So that is why I say there needs to be some discussion amongst us that doesn't have anything to do with the so-called good guys. These so-called good guys should not be at the forefront 
of any type of movement we have because someone is going to infiltrate them. I don't care if that so-called good guy look like you or not. They need to be filtered. They need to be examined to ensure that they mean well. Because we have some sellouts as we know. Also, that is a wonderful strategy. That works on a lot of people. Especially those with the religious minds who like to sing Kumbaya and stuff like that. Because they're going to be saying, oh, see, we got some good guys over there. If it wasn't for them, we would not be protected. We would not be okay. Okay, well, how about this? Wouldn't you want to get to a point to which we don't have to rely on these so-called good guys? They don't need to rely on our good guys. They don't need to. They can protect themselves. They don't need you. So how is it that anytime we need protection... Anytime we got to defend ourselves, we have to go and rely on some of their so-called good guys. You got to respect the Mongolians. Because they are doing it. The same way the Europeans are doing it. The Negroid people are the only ones on this planet who are not doing it. Out of the three main groups of people on the planet, the Caucasoid people, the Mongoloid, and the Negroid, they don't need each other to survive and they sure don't need us to survive. But such is not the case when it comes to us. Right now, we need them to survive. If we wake up tomorrow and neither group is on the planet, we are done for. For the most part. Then again, that might be a good thing because we will figure it out. Not saying I want them to get erased. I'm saying we will have no choice but to figure it out. So it may not be a bad thing. I may even need to rethink that because... We are not ready for that. Our mindset is not there. We are too religious. We like to argue about which way is the right way and all this type of stuff. Our minds are not there. But I believe we can get there. We can get there and we will get there. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. But we can get there. The blueprint is out there. The formula is out there. It is everywhere. We simply need to extract the good out of all of them and put them together together. And then rebuild our community. We need to look out for each other. We need to look out for our youths. And then the people who look like us, who are not for us, who are very destructive to our development, we have to keep an eye on them. We really have to because it, it is a dangerous game. We cannot allow our emotions to get in the way. I don't care if that person is your brother, your mother, your father, your sister. We have to manage those people. Just like other nations manage their people. That is why they have their rich, their upper classes and stuff like that. There's a group of people who are not with that trust in everybody type of thing. You're not going to simply show up and then they give you access to everything. They're going to watch you for a while. Every single one of them are going to watch you. And they understand that they also have some gullible people. And so they are not going to put their entire fortune in the hands of their gullible people. They are going to control it and they are going to have their private meetings where none of us are involved, where none of us can attend. Unlike us, to have them in the middle of every meeting we have. It doesn't matter how important or how unimportant the discussion is. We make sure that they're in it with us, especially if it is an important meeting.